All right, it's time to start working towards the Night of Champions. Uh, hopefully we'll get there, maybe get some sort of title shot, but I doubt it. We will try to get in rivalry here. We need a new one. Who do we want to go? Who should we fight? We'll go against The Rock. Fuck The Rock. He ruined WrestleMania. So fuck it, we'll go fight him. Get him all worked up and do what you do. Uh, this one's to load up, so if something bad's gonna happen, I'm gonna have to reject who's ever coming after me, probably, and go after somebody else. And I have what I feel is an entertaining story coming up. So we'll get this going until I can focus. And then we'll start talking time. I like how we've never seen this whole entrance. Like once or twice and get all like shiny with that hoodie on. What is he doing out here? Hey, hey, wait a minute. We then we already did Bray Wyatt, didn't we? Why don't you go in there and break him up, Cole? Yeah, Cole. Break, come get him off me. <laughs> That's how you do it. Make a name for yourself. Kid. And he's turned his attention. Will this distraction come back to haunt him? Nope. Because I don't care. He's got to be vigilant about not taking any more damage to the neck. That wild strike found nothing but empty air that time. <laughs> he lost his finisher for some reason. Swinging for the fences and missing. So I don't know if that makes a difference or not. He's begging him to bring it. Can we just? That's too late now. You come after me? We'll break you. I like how the crowd always cheers for me, but I'm not a face yet. They can't breathe. Oh, come on. Is that really necessary? Come on, let me up. Oh, Bullshit. Intentions clear right now. He don't win that. Whatever. Please join. Let's talk about he int He's not on my list. We're not gonna skip this one. Because we're going against the you rock. Two have been I don't think it's a rivalry at all. Stuff like this happens day. Yeah, well we'll blow a brush it off. Thanks for the time. Back I wanna to give him a compliment because I for I I forgot that they give you the second question and ask you about this the uh Do you want this to be a rivalry? And I don't. So that's why we skipped it. Now we're going to do the same thing to somebody else and make it better. Look at him. Look at that smug. Oh, look at, look at me. I'm the Tooth Fairy. I have puppy dogs. Oh, why does he get some bullshit fake entrance? Come on. What? No. No. Oh, you can't do a rock bottom up here? That's bullshit. Oh, out of nowhere. The game's the game's scamming me, man. The crab is cinched in. The knee is torn. Put the back in a lot of trouble. Get off. Get off it. Man, oh man, did he take a wild swing with that one? You're right. That was wild indeed. You should be able to do rock bottoms on the freaking the cement. And he goes right after. Or the metal stage, or the hell you want to call it. We'll just do this instead, I don't care. Fuck him. Fuck you! We know what's coming here. Looks like another check in the wind column. Oh man, I did not think he would go this far. That's how you do that. We'll feud with the rock. We'll make rock babies. I'll show him how to make real rock babies. Welcome back to... Let's talk about... You went out there... Uh, I'm having fun out there. The WWE Universe wants a show? Nah, okay, we, I don't... You two have been... Clapping. That's all I wanted. He's trying to start a war that he can't finish. We've seen this before. Thanks for the time. Back to you. Alright, so here we go. So, this is gonna be a story. 
Not about how my life got flipped, turned upside down, but about how there's a way in life to handle things, and a way... I, I don't know. There's a way in life to handle things. That's what this is about. So, last night, I went to see Jason Aldean. It's my second ever country concert. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of country. Excuse me, but all my friends are. I like going to hang out with them when possible. Especially like when we go out and do things together because everyone's on busy schedules here and there. And, you know, it's always, it's just, it's a good time when everyone can actually get together and relax for one night and have fun and, you know, just not worry about things. So, this tale starts with dinner. Uh, the restaurant we went to was very busy because we went to dinner at like 5.30 at night. And I was told by everyone, oh, make sure, go, go, get, go get us a table. You know, well, we might be there a little late, go get us a table. So, I do the right thing. They say, we need a table for four. I text them, say, table for four or five. Are you counting me in this, are you, are you counting me in this count or no? And I didn't get a response, so I panicked. I told the girl, uh, five people, please. She's like, okay, it'll be uh, 30 to 45 minutes. Make sure your whole party is here when you get here, because if not, we have to give up your table. So literally five minutes later, get the text on my phone. Oh, your table's ready. And I'm just staring at it like, well, fuck, none of my friends are here yet. So I'm starting to get nervous. I kind of walk rain outside, out in the rain. Uh, I got soaked yesterday because I, I was walking around a bunch to kill time. And it was raining out because I had nothing else to do. And got wet. You know. It's not really, good, not really an important point story. Uh, so eventually two of my four friends that I thought were coming got there. And I was like, well, where's the other two? And they were like, well, they're not coming. I told you four. And I was like, yes, and I told you. And my part of this count, because if not, it makes a big difference. So I got four, I had four texts at that point about my table. I was like, we have to go in right now because they're going to freak the fuck out that I haven't been in here yet. So we go in, and the girl is like, I was just about to give up, give up your table. And she's like, five, right? And I was like, yep, here we are. And she's like, well, there's three of you. And I said, yes, there two are on their way. They're coming right, they're coming shortly. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, no, no, no. It's a, it's a busy night. I can't do this. I gotta tell you, these guys are in the best seen them in. Sorry. And to be fair, I understood why. When you say you want a table for five, I mean, they're giving you a table for six. It's not really right on a busy night, but I was like, hey, I thought they were coming. This is all I can really do right now. So we're hemming and hawing, and the girl was like, well, uh, I, I don't really know what to do. I, I really shouldn't be giving this table. And my friend had a, a Cowboys hoodie on, so she was like, yeah, you know, because of the Cowboys hoodie, I'll let you go, which is an interesting response living anywhere remotely close in Pennsylvania, because around here it's... Uh, fuck the Cowboys, let's go Eagles. But you know what? Fuck the Eagles. That's how I feel. He's too tired to jump. So she lets us sit, and she's like, if the manager comes by, and if someone, if people ask questions, just say your friends are parking the car, because I really shouldn't be doing this. But she gives us her table. No big deal. My friend's magical, magical Dallas Cowboys coat saved us. Saved us, saved us some nonsense, I'll say. Uh, so we eat dinner for, uh, like, we're there for like an hour. We get out pretty quick because we're like, it's kind of fucked up that we're here with not a bunch of people. So the one bar by where we were going for the concert, uh, they have like a secret hidden bar in the back. Like old school speakeasy, 19, 20, 30s prohibition. Where there's no like little slide thing on the door. You don't have to know a special knock. But if you don't really know it's back there, you would never know it's back there. They have a... Uh, it's basically there's an exit sign on top of the door to go into the other bar. And in order to... I mean, you, you just you just go through the exit and go, go into the bar. But it's hidden to the point where you would think you're walking out of the building. But I was like, no, no, guys, this is so cool, this is so cool. Let's go back here. And it's very hipstery in the back. And if you, the, the same two guys always seem to be attending bar back there. And the, the, the rule is, the dude makes his own custom drinks. 
And if you don't like them, you get it for free. Like, if you want a gin and tonic, the, at least I don't know the one guy's name, so I've talked to him a bunch of times now. Uh, he will micify it for you and make it all classy-like. And then if you don't like it, he'll give you a normal one instead, and it's no big deal. So... None of my friends were drinking the fancy stuff. I don't want to either because we're drinking IPAs where we're at dinner. So I didn't want to switch it up too much. But we were staying for like five, ten minutes, which kind of sucks. But eventually we got to sit down like in these huge, plush, cushy chairs. and Ooh. Uh, it's these really cool, like, plushy chairs and just... The tables are like the wire spindles that people make like tab uh, picnic tables out of sometimes. Like the real like DIY way to do it. So we're sitting there chilling out. Yeah, I don't want him to do this. And the two people I was with for that are my two best friends in the entire world. Like one of them could say I accidentally killed somebody. And they're the type of friends that I've had for, I think, 13 years now. Or if, it, or if my buddy was like, hey, there's a body. I'd be like, say no more. Let's go disappear this. And it would, it'd be nothing to me. But, uh, so, we're all chilling in there. And they were both like, well, it kind of sucks we're leaving now because it's actually really cool in here. And I was like, I was like, see, I told you guys, I told you guys this was awesome. I told you guys this place was cool. And they're like, yeah, we should have hung out longer. Uh, oh, well, no big deal. But it was like, we should all come back sometime. And I was like, yes! Because, I mean... I like when people are happy, as a general statement. So, getting my friends pumped and having a good time at the place that I recommended, I just thought it was awesome. So, we leave there, walk to the arena. The concert is at. I call my other friend that had had my oh, tickets. Uh... Nothing, nothing's gonna happen, don't worry about it. There's the bell, and here we go. We're all along for the ride on this one, but make no mistake about it. Yeah, see, if I can't do anything, I don't care. Uh, so they call and they're like, hey, uh, go to Will Call for your ticket, but uh, the, the seats got moved during a different section. So I was like, wait, what? I'm not really sure what you're telling me. You know, come out and meet me. And they're like, just go to the, just go to the thing, and get your ticket. So I walk over, get my ticket myself, go back and meet my two best friends. And I was like, hey, I, I'm in this section. I was like, what section are you guys in? And they had separate tickets all together, which I didn't realize until uh, last night. And they were like, but your ticket says section 101, and everyone else is sitting in 103 or on the floor. And I was like, well, what the fuck? I was like, I'm not gonna. I was like, that's bullshit. I'm not gonna fucking sit in a concert by myself. Like, I, my desire to go in the first place was not immense. It was there was a ticket, and it seemed like something different to try. So when they were like, well, your ticket's not with anybody, any of your friends whatsoever. I was like, fuck this. I'm just going back to the bar then. I was like, don't, worry, don't we'll have, I'll have fun by myself. Don't worry about it. And I guess proving that he's my best friend. My buddy Todd was like, that's bullshit. He's like, fuck that. He's like, I'll, he's like, I'll just hang out on the floor with you then. He's like, don't even worry about it. Don't, it's, that's stupid. That's fucking stupid. I'm going to, I'm going to text, I'm going to text my, uh, his sister, like his sister, her boyfriend, and like some of that group are like the part of my group of friends as well. So he's like, I'm going to text my sister and tell her that's fucking bullshit. I'm pissed off. That's, that's fucking dumb. So we go in. I had the first ticket lady scan my ticket, and she was like, you have to go over to this window. There's an issue with your ticket now. So I walk over, and I was like, yeah. Uh, I was told there's an issue with my ticket, and I'm already in a different section than the rest of my friends. I'm not really happy about this. And the kid was like, well, you know, no one, no one in your group's name is on this ticket. The way it worked is, I guess they rebought the tickets from somebody else off of StubHub. And I was like, well, I mean, I didn't pay for a ticket to be by myself and not sit with my friends. You know, I don't understand how this happens. I'm not sure why I'm by myself. And I started causing not a loud scene, but I hit, I hit the frustrated tones in my voice to the, to the point where my, my two friends were like, you just calm down, just relax, we'll figure it out, just calm down. 
And I was like, no, I'm not really that pissed off, but I am getting worked up, and, you know, I'm not super thrilled about this right now. So we're going back and forth. Uh, eventually, the kid that was... I say kid, because I call everyone kid. I have no idea how old he actually was. Uh, eventually, talks to the lady who, that, who was with him and was like, hey, we, we, well, where is his ticket? I don't even know where his ticket is. And she was like, well, you know... It's different because you bought it from somebody else, but I don't even know where your ticket is. And we're like, well, we see one extra one right there that's with the rest of our friends. And they're like, the lady could tell I was getting pissed off, and she was like, well, whatever, whatever just give them that ticket. It's not that big of a deal. So they gave me an extra ticket that was still in the row with my friends, even though the ticket I walked into the building with had a completely different section. And they were like, well, it's obstructed and all this other bullshit. Which is why I started haggling and negotiating in the first place. But eventually I got a ticket with my friends, and I got to have a decent time. So, I guess the moral of the story is, if you feel like, you're, if you, feel like you paid for a service, or, I mean, I do this for everything, to be honest with you. Um, I've worked in customer service a long time in my life. Even my job now is customer service-ish. I'm not. I'm. I'd, I'm never going to be rude to someone in those situations because I know they can't control what's going on. But I'm surely at least going to speak my displeasure of the situation of what's going on. I know a lot of times I can't fix anything. I know. I know how to. I know how to pick my fights. I would never just yell at somebody and throw a temper tantrum in in those sorts of situations. But realistically, I paid for a ticket. And they were trying to put me in a section that's completely separate from everybody else for a reason that no one could actually tell me. So I talked my way out of it and got fair, a fair recourse. This is stupid, by the way. It just jacks up their, uh, his stamina meter, apparently. Or his um, boost percentage. But... If I would have kept my mouth shut, I would have been sitting in a section that was obstructed from the stage by myself without any of my friends all night. And I would have had an absolutely miserable time. But instead, at least vo vocally my displeasure for the situation got it resolved. So as long as you're not an asshole, most people try to help you out. Because most people realize that what's going on is not right in the first place. And they will, they will try to, you know, at least try to do the right thing for you. So the concert itself was pretty good. Got to, got to drink with my friends, get a little, get my little tipsy for the the country show. Uh, the show itself was pretty good. I was surprised because right before the concert started, my friends were like, "How many Jason Aldean songs do you know?" I said, "Pretty sure one." And they're like, "You know more than one song." And I was like, "Not by name." I was like, "If you if you played songs, I would probably say yes, I know this song." But I don't know him offhand. I don't listen to country enough. I listen to fucking hardcore and punk rock. There, there's not much of an overlap. But I found out that there is a lot of overlap. Because most of the country that we heard from the bands that were there... Uh, if you don't know, country is not really country anymore. It's like country, pop, hard rock. So a lot of songs have like... Chugga chugga guitars, kind of, almost, and distortion, all sorts of good shit. So there was parts where, like, I would have thought I was at at least, like, a rock concert or a metal concert with, like, that dark red flashing lights and, like, the and intros to songs were, like, with, like, the heavy lights flashing and shit. It was just kind of interesting. But, uh,. The highlight was, or at least the funniest part to me, the we, all my friends smoke, and I usually do when I drink too. It's not good for you. No one should do it. Horrible habit. Uh, I started doing it when I was younger. It's a hard habit to break. Uh, no one fucking do it. I swear to God, don't fucking do it. But so you have to go outside to go smoke, and they have a, a special section, and the security lady, who is I'll say like, I'll say 40s, 50s. Uh, we were walking out, and she's like, you have to have your tickets if you want to come back in. And we are kind of joking around with her, and I was like, I, offhand, I don't know what pocket my ticket's in. I'm not sure. And she's like, you have to have your ticket. 
She's like, don't don't forget your ticket. So eventually I found it. I was like, hey, I found it. We're good, right? And she's like, yep, go outside. So we went outside. And when we came back in, I was like, hey, here's my ticket. We're good. And she was laughing. She's like, yep, you have it. I'm proud of you. So that was the first time that night that we, that we talked to her. Uh, our second trip outside, uh, we were walking outside and she was telling people, don't forget your tickets. You should, you know, make sure you have your shit before you come back out here. Before I come back in. And I was like, I had my ticket, but you remember me, right? And I started doing the uh, the John Cena face, you can't see me thing. And then she was just laughing and she was like, she was like, Oh, I would never forget a handsome face like that. She's like, you're good, don't worry about it. So I was laughing, and all my friends heard it. So we walked away a little bit, and I ran back, and I was like, thank you so much, you're the best. And I gave her a hug, and she was just laughing, and she's like, oh, you're welcome, don't worry about it. So then I was like, the lady thinks I'm handsome, that's fucking, that's fucking awesome. So my friends were laughing at me. Uh, that was the second time. So the third time we went out, uh, we just walked by. Oh no, it was when we were leaving. Uh, we were walking by, and I just waved and I was like, "Bye, have a nice night." And she was like, "She's like, bye, sweetie, have a nice night." And she gave me a hug again. So I just thought it was the funniest thing ever. It was funny because a she gave me hugs and put up with my bullshit. I mean, she's working security and probably has better things to do than hug drunk guys. But I thought it was funny as fuck. She seemed like she was having a good time. And she called me handsome. Which always makes me happy. But that... See? But... I don't know where that story was going on the fact that it makes me laugh, to be honest with you. But yeah, people skills. That's why it's funny. That's why... Again. You should... Especially for this year, too. Like I said, I'm trying to put myself out of my comfort zone more. So I'm trying to, like... Not so much to complain about the ticket. But... Fuck you, Rock. Uh, uh, most people are nicer than you think. I know everyone worries about what other people think of them. And there's times that I do still. But the older you get, the more, the more you'll realize that most people are so concerned about what people think of them as well that they... I'm trying to think about the best way to word this. They worry as much about what you think of them as you're thinking of what they think of you. If that makes sense. So there's really there's really no reason to um I, I know I know it's hard. I'm not saying things that people probably don't know. Uh, but there's no real reason to be scared of people, I guess. Because I might have thought, like, there, there was people around that probably, like, this kid seems stupid and crazy. But I'm sure there was things that they did that night where they were like, I hope no one looks at me funny because I'm doing X. So, everyone's the same. And most people have the same internal voices that are like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? What's what, what do these people think of me? So everyone, you should. So everyone should try to not worry as much. I guess is really what I'm trying to say. You have way more fun. The sooner you can. That seems that's a stupid move. Uh, the sooner you can relax in those social situations. And I know some. I I, I just turned 33. I know some 33 year old guy who does videos on YouTube telling you, hey, don't worry so much about what these people say. Not always the easiest thing. It's not easy. For, there's times I worry, you know, just... Try to have as much fun as you can. Do things that make you laugh, entertain you, and have fun with your friends. Because you'll remember that way more than you'll remember if someone thought you were stupid or not. And that's my story. And that's wrestling for tonight. Uh, the next wrestling video will probably be after Raw, since I'm trying to split them up more, like I said. So I will see everybody next time for our rivalry match against The Rock. Lights.